Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the net. We're glad that you're with us this morning, and uh, we're going to start our worship off with Ain't No Grave. Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber, and he's come to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There ain't no
if you walked out of the grave I'm walking to if you walked out of the grave I'm walking to if you walked out of the grave I'm walking to if you walked out This is a song I wrote several years ago called You're the One, and I think it's good to have a perspective of how great God is in this, uh, this time that we're going through and, uh, and who we are. You're the one. Everything I did was great in the eyes of people. And I received the greatest praise and honor from man. The brightness of my glory wouldn't even be a spark in the light of the awesome sun is your one you're the one and ten thousand times ten thousand gathered at your throne and with a voice of truth and power they're singing this song they sing holy 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 is the lamb of glory who was and is and is to come you're the one you're Stop saying, holy is the Lord. If I could know every man, search every heart, you must. Walk those 
This is what John saw when he looked into heaven. Then I looked and heard the voice, the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and all the earth and under the earth and all the sea and all that is in them. on the throne to the Lamb in praise and honor and glory and power forever ever and ever and ten thousand times ten thousand gathered at your throne with a voice of truth and power morning and we thank you that you are the strong God that you are we thank you Lord for your goodness we thank you for your mercy we thank you for the grace that you give us to make it through each day and Lord we turn to you this morning because we know that you are our help you are our refuge in the times of trouble and you are our Savior. And so we come to you this morning and we ask you to just connect with us. As we open our hearts to you, Lord, we just ask you to touch us in a way, to speak to us in a way that we have never heard you before. We ask that you would give us truth, that you would speak your truth to us and set us free from all kinds of things. Set us free from anger. Some of us have anger because we've been cooped up in our houses. Save us, Lord. Give us grace for frustration and things like that. And Lord, help us. Give us grace for the fear that so many of us have. The fear of losing our health. The fear of losing our financial state and I pray that you would just comfort us Lord and give us confidence in you and give us confidence that not only will you take care of us today but you will take care of us tomorrow and in the future 
Lord, we love you. And as we talk about the quest for peace this morning, Lord, we ask you for peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. And we ask you to help us, Lord, with our anxieties, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. My name is Lene, and I want to welcome you to the Net Church. We really appreciate you joining us online. And if you would like to, we would love for you to visit our website, thenet.org, and visit us and let us know if you have a prayer request online. You can shoot us any prayer request that you have, and we would love to pray for you throughout the week. Also, um, you can give online through your mobile device or our website, and we appreciate everyone's continued faithfulness. Um, I want to say that uh, we have not gotten the go on opening churches yet, but I don't think it'll be too much longer, and I just want you to know that we are working on a plan and have a pretty solid plan in place, and we will let you know more about that closer to time. We really appreciate you being here today. We're looking forward to our new series called A Quest for Peace, and I hope that you enjoy it. And again, I just appreciate you being here um, online today, and we welcome you to the NET Church. Good morning, everybody, and welcome again, and uh, we're so glad to have you with us. We're starting a new series today called A Quest for Peace. Um, the reason we are doing a series called A Quest for Peace is because I am on a personal quest for peace. God has blessed me with so many great people and so many great things in my life. Uh, he's blessed me with a ministry that I love, and uh, he's blessed me uh, in so many ways. But one thing that has eluded me in my life is peace. And I, I guess I really didn't realize it until all this COVID stuff hit. And for some reason during this time, I have become keenly aware that I need this kind of peace that God offers. The kind of peace that transcends human understanding. It's the kind of peace that Jesus had when he was asleep in the boat in the middle of the storm. And everybody on the boat thought that they were going to die. And they go and they wake up Jesus and Jesus is peaceful, he is at rest, and he is actually asleep in the boat. I want that kind of peace. And so uh, today we are starting the series with the topic, anxiety. Now I know a lot of you uh, deal with anxiety. This is the pandemic in our world that we don't talk much about, but it is universal. There's so much anxiety in the world, and I think that it has to do with, with uh, technology and all the things that we are aware of that people, um, you know, years ago were not aware of. And so uh, a lot of people deal with anxiety. And before we get into the topic of anxiety, I just want to say this one thing. I have suffered with anxiety for 30 years. Uh, the first five years that I suffered with it, I suffered with it. I did not um, do anything about it. May I read a few books, I uh, prayed about it a lot, but it did not seem to help my physical symptoms. And anxiety is, uh, it's a complicated thing uh, because it involves your emotions and it involves your thoughts. Uh, it involves your body. Your body actually changes and you have, you know, sim physical symptoms with anxiety. And so it's a complicated thing, and you don't really know where it comes from. You don't go to the doctor and, and have him tell you exactly what your problem is, where it's coming from, and you know, all this in one visit. It's, it's a complicated thing. And it can come from uh, thought patterns. It can come from a, an emotional uh, thing that, that happens to you. It can come uh, from your body. You know, you, it can be physiological. And 
I believe that my, my anxiety comes from that just a physiological problem that I have that uh, periodically my body just dumps adrenaline into my bloodstream. And, and it, it, it results in an anxiety attack or it, uh, you know, it, it, it causes me to have some kind of a panic, uh, get into some kind of a panic mode. Um, so I, I just want to say, as your pastor, as someone has been through it, it is not a sin if you are struggling with a, a real problem like I had. Uh, it isn't, there is no sin in going to get medical help for this. I, I want to give you permission. If you are really struggling, don't, don't think, you know, I've got to rely on um, a, a, some kind of spiritual thing. I've got to rely on Rob's talk today to get me through this anxiety. Go and see a medical professional because all knowledge comes from God and, and it can really help you if you're like me and you, it just comes out of nowhere and, uh, and so I've said all that, but I want to say this, that the scripture has some amazing things to say about this subject, and we're going to get into that today. And it is my hope as we begin this series, as I begin this quest of, of my own, it is my hope that this will greatly help the problem that I have. Uh, it could be that through all these years, really what I needed was, was the truth of Scripture and the principles that I'm going to teach you in this series. And I hope that uh, it will help you, and I hope that it will help me, and I want to just invite you to come on this quest, on this journey with me. Now, we're going to be uh, in Philippians 4 today, and, I, and this is a rich passage of scripture and we're not going anywhere else we're going to stay in this chapter today and I want you if you have uh, if you if you have a problem with anxiety this would be a great time for you to take notes uh, if you have your Bibles go ahead and turn to Philippians 4 uh, if you have your phone or device or whatever you can go to a Bible app or go to uh, Bible Gateway and and look at this scripture with me as I read from the NIV so we're going to start today uh, in chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 4, okay? And so it starts out this way. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. There's almost a little attitude that Paul has here whenever he says this. He says, rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again. Rejoice. Sounds like a country preacher almost. I will say it again. Amen. Rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So let's take a look at this first part. This first part. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. When should we rejoice? Always. Now you're going to see this through this passage of Scripture. He's not talking about sometimes. He's not talking about most of the time. He's not talking about when you feel like it. He is talking about all the time. These are principles that you need to put into place in your life all the time. How often? Every day? Yes, every day. How many times a day? When you wake up, when you eat lunch, when you eat uh, dinner, and when you go to bed at night. All day. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Well, what do you have to rejoice about? I'm sure that you can find some things to rejoice about. And here's what I do. I rejoice not only about the things that God's done in my past, uh, and the blessings that I have uh, enjoyed in my past, but I rejoice with him about the things that he is doing now and the things that he is going to do. And there's a lot of this in this passage, passage of Scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. So this is the first thing. Rejoice. Rejoice. Write it down. Rejoice in the Lord always always and then he says let your gentleness be evident to all the lord is near let your gentleness what is he saying he's saying don't respond in anger don't respond in fear don't just react to your situation don't just react to something that affects your emotions don't just react keep your blood pressure down stay calm be gentle 
just this last week, you know, we all have a spectrum. Uh, and, and when you're looking at your gentleness, your gentleness is on the spectrum. You know, maybe you're very gentle or maybe you're not gentle at all. But this, this week, I was talking to a guy that I do business with. He's, he's a friend of mine. And he said, he said, you know, Rob, he said, you are too nice. He says, you're too nice to everybody. He says, he says, you want to help people. And he says, I understand that you want to, to help people and, and do the right thing. And he says, but you're too nice. People take advantage of you because you're too nice. And his opinion, his perspective of me is that I am a kind and gentle Christian guy, you know, started a church because I want to help people and and do, I'm still doing my business, and, and I, you know, I'm just trying to live this good life. And his opinion of me is that you know, Rob's a gentle guy. So just to have fun, I went home, and I uh, asked my wife. And I said, uh, I said to Lene, I said, would you say that I am a gentle person? Now, we have this little thing that we do at our house. It's just a little inside joke. Because when our middle son, Houston, was a, a li just a little guy, uh, whenever you asked him something that he didn't want to answer, he would, just shrug, he would just shrug his shoulders, just like that. Houston, did you do such and such? And that's, that was his answer. And so whenever I, whenever I went out and asked Lene, she was out on the back deck, and I went out there and I said, would you say that I'm a gentle person? And I was, I was looking for her response. And she, she just went, and I laughed, and she laughed. The thing is that I am not as gentle as my friend thought that I was uh, because, because I'm not gentle at all times. My gentleness is not evident to all. And, and Paul is talking, uh, you know, he's talking to people like me. He's talking to type A uh, driven people, the bias for action, you know, people that, that immediately when a problem arises, whenever a situation arises, I want to spring into action. I want to fix it. I, want, I know what to do. If I need to talk to somebody, I'm not going to pray about it. I'm just going to go talk to them. If, if something needs to be fixed, I'm just going to spring into action. And I'm going to do it because I have a bias for action. I want to get it done. But this is not uh, compatible with the gentleness that Paul is talking about here. He's saying, slow down, calm down. You know, take a breath. Take it easy. Be gentle. Be so gentle that not only will the people that you work with think that you're gentle, but you're, the people that you live with, your wife will think you're gentle. Your children will think you're gentle. Let it be evident to all. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And then he reassures us with this thing. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. Be gentle. Take a breath. Be calm. The Lord, your help, your salvation, your help in times of trouble, your counselor, the one who has all the truth and all the answers, the one who knows far more than you'll ever know. He is near. So stay calm. Then he goes on, and this is the meat of this passage. It says, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation. How many situations? Every situation. There it is again. Every situation. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So this is the scripture that I have read, I don't know, hundreds of times probably in my life when, as I have tried to deal with my anxiety because it's the, it's, this is the anxious scripture. This is the anxiety scripture. If you suffer from anxiety, you've read the scripture before. It's there. It's there for everyone who has anxiety. But I've never seen it the way I have seen it just this week. So let's talk about this for a minute. Don't be anxious about anything. That's, that's a tall order for people like me, people who are, are driven, you know, people who uh, are, uh, are anxious to fix everything immediately. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about 
anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't, this is, this is something that I believe the Lord just revealed to me in the scripture this week. If you want to live a life of peace, a life free from anxiety, don't wait, write this down, don't wait until you're anxious to deal with your anxiety. Don't wait until then. Don't wait until you have an anxiety attack and then go to the scripture and look it up. Now, if, if that's what you've done, then go to the scripture and look it up. It's better to start there than not to start at all. But he's saying, start now. Don't wait until you're anxious to deal with your anxiety. So this is how he says to do it. But in every situation, starting now, starting today, in every situation, by prayer and petition, and then Paul qualifies the kind of prayer and the kind of petition and the kind of attitude that you should have. He says, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So in every situation, that means every situation, by prayer and petition, a petition is just a request, a request to God, with thanksgiving in your heart, present your request to God. Now, what in the world does this look like? Does that mean that I have to spend all day, every day in my prayer closet? I go in the, the room and I close the door, as Jesus talked about, and I kneel down and I pray and I just stay in my prayer closet all day long praying. That's not realistic. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about bringing God into the loop of your thoughts. I talked a couple of weeks ago about... Um, about being an open conduit for God to bring you into his loop. But if you will bring God into your loop, into the loop of your thoughts, so that you are aware that he is near, that he is with you, he is near, and that he's always near, he's always there. If you will uh, open, open your consciousness, open your heart to him, at all times, then you can run everything by him because he is always present with you. There's a funny thing that happens in our house. I'm sure it happens in your house too. Uh, when our children come in and they have a problem, if that problem is something that is in my kind of my jurisdiction, you know, in, as my role as a father. Um, if it comes kind of under my heading, Lene will look, she'll just look at me, you know, to see what my reaction is going to be, to see what my response is going to be, to see what I have to say about it. If, if the, the kids come in and they have a problem that is in her uh, area of expertise, if it has to do with schedules or if it has to do with relationships or if it has to do with uh, all kinds of things that she's better at than I am, uh, I will often just, you know, look. I just look at her. What, what does she, what's she going to say? What, what is she going to tell them to do? What, you know, what is going to be her response? And I've lived my life this way to some extent, but it, uh, it has not been a habit over the past, I would say, the past decade, decade and a half. It has not been this every thought, you know, every day, always, as the scripture is telling us. And so uh, a lot of times, all that has to be done is to pause, to wait, to look to God, to acknowledge him and just say, Lord, you know, help what, what do I do? You know, this, this is up to you. I, I will move if you say to move. I will, I will stay calm and stay at peace and not do anything if that's what you're saying. I just had a situation this week. Since I have been looking at this scripture, I had a situation this week. It was an answer to my prayer. It was exactly what I wanted to happen. And it had to do with uh, some people that are just awesome people that are going to help me with something. And I wanted, whenever I got the news, and I, 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 didn't, even, I didn't even ask, it, was no, it wasn't as if I had asked them, 
It was just that they popped up, these awesome people, just popped up because God is supplying my need and he is answering my prayer. I didn't go out and contact anybody. They just popped up as a blessing in my life. And when they did, my first reaction was I wanted to say, yes, 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 I've been praying for this. And come on and you're, uh, you know, you're welcome to come and do what you're volunteering to do and blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to just take it on my own and do that. But God, but I was, I was in the scripture. I was thinking about this. I was looking to God. So immediately when that happened, I just looked to God and, and God said, just, just wait. Just calm. Pe just have peace in this situation. Just calm down. Be gentle. And, and so I contacted them and I said, let's, let's have a meeting. Let's get together. Let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Let's put God in charge of our lives in this situation. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to give the, you know, give the control over to God, to look to Him because He is anxious. I know that's no pun intended, but He is anxious for us to, uh, to give Him this place in our lives, the place of leadership. He is anxious for us to follow him. And so he is there, ready, the moment that we decide to follow him in this. So it says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving for what he has done, thanksgiving for what he is doing, thanksgiving for what he is going to do, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and this is the payoff, and the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Is that not awesome? That is awesome. So that's what we're all after. We are after this peace of God, which transcends all understanding. We're not talking about the kind of peace that the world gives. Jesus says, I'm not giving you that kind of peace. I'm giving you a different kind of peace. So he's not talking about the kind of peace that comes from clearing your schedule. He's not talking about that kind of peace. He's not talking about the kind of peace that comes from managing your money well. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about human understanding of peace. He's talking about the supernatural kind of peace that transcends all understanding. That no matter how great the storm is, you are at peace. And that's what we want. I know that's what I want. I know that's what you want. And that's what I want for all of us as we take this journey. Now, um, this next scripture that, that I'm going to share with you is, I've said it before, I've shared it with you at the net before, but this is probably the most beautiful and the most comforting scripture to me as someone who suffers from anxiety and so I want to share this with you and so some of you might might be thinking well do I get any time off from this constant prayer this constant uh, communication with God this constant uh, communion with him this constant presence of God in my life that sounds like a whole lot to contend with. It sounds like a, a burden to have to have that all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not a burden. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like falling in love. I remember when Lene and I first fell in love, we could not get enough of each other. We could not talk enough. We would stay up all night, half the night, talking, sitting in her driveway at her mom and dad's house. I, I, would, I would stay out there and we would talk and talk and talk. And then, then I would go home and we'd get on the phone and we'd talk some more. I mean, we, we could not get enough of each other. And I'm telling you, when you bring God into your life in this way, you're going to discover a, uh, a relationship. And maybe you've, you have a relationship with him already, but you're going to discover a relationship that is beyond anything that you've ever experienced before. And you're going to love it. It's not going to be a burden. It's going to be an awesome thing. 
So you might think, well, what do I do when I'm not tackling some problem? What do I do? Do I, do I get any time off from this always, every time kind of thing that God requires us to do? What do I do in that time? What do I do when I'm at risk? What do I do when I'm, you know, just relaxing? Well, here's a great thing to do. Um, Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, finally, whatever is true. Man, I just love this. Whatever is true. Whatever is noble. Think about these words. Whatever is true. Whatever is noble. Whatever is right. Whatever is pure. Think about that. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. This is the word. Lovely is the word that I've always said to Linnea. I've said to her since we began dating. I told her the first time when we started dating. I said, you are lovely. You are a lovely person. That's the word I use to describe her. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is admirable. Get this. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy... Think about such things. Let me say it again. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Sometimes we need to turn off the podcast in our car. Sometimes we need to turn off the music. Sometimes we need to turn off the television. Sometimes we need to turn things down and turn things off. And we just need to think about these things. Uh, I was telling Linnea as, as we were coming here this morning, I was telling her, you know, uh, this has been a really tough time for a lot of, for a lot of people. It's been... Uh, really tough for people who are losing money, losing their businesses, or losing um, so much. Some people are losing their health. Um, it's been a tough time for a lot of people. And I told her, I said, I know it's tough, and I almost feel guilty about this, but it has been such a good time for our family. Our son, who's been off at school, he's back home. He's doing school online. He just finished up school online. And, and, man, it's been great for us. I'm telling you, we, we spend time together. We talk together. It's just been a great time. And I have looked at my children, and I've, I've noted, you know, the things that are noble and the things that are right. And I'm seeing my, my oldest son making great decisions, and I'm seeing things that are pure in my children, as, as, we, as we just go out in the backyard, we have a basketball court, and we play basketball together, and we love the time that we are spending together. It's fantastic. Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I'll tell you, it will transform the, the way you think. It will transform your heart and the way you think about things and the way you feel things. This is a beautiful passage of Scripture. If, if you're not familiar with this, I, I would just encourage you to take this whole Scripture and read it over and over and then to practice it because Paul finishes up the section with this. He says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace, get this, the God of peace will be with you. You have to practice it. You, you might just you know, turn this off today, and you might go on about your business, and you may not take it seriously. You may, you may think, well, that's a really great message, but you might not put it into practice. If you don't put it into practice you're just not going to have the peace of God. And so uh, this week, as I began to get into the scripture, I thought, man, I better put this into practice in my life. And so I, I just want to end with this. I, 
I had a tension headache, a stress headache. I get these and they're really bad. I had one Tuesday and I woke up with it and I went to bed with it that night. It was all day. Wednesday, same thing, all day long. I came to worship practice Wednesday night, a terrible headache, went to bed with it that night. Thursday I got up and it was a little bit better, but it was back that afternoon. And then Friday, I woke up with it and I had it all day and it was just, I'm just telling you, it was just, it was just killing me. And so I decided to put this into practice and I was at the intersection at Hampton Cove, it's five minutes away from my house, and I began to say to the Lord, you know, I, the, I, I want to tell you about the things that I'm stressed about and I want to make my request known to you and, and, I, and I thank you for everything that you've done for me. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your power. And I thank you for what you're going to do in helping me with these things that are stressing me out. And I began to confess those things and pray those things with thanksgiving. And when I pulled into my driveway, I noticed... I realized for the first time this week my headache was gone and it has not come back. That's what will happen. Think, when you put this into practice, things will happen. I want that for you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everyone listening and I pray that you would inspire us all to put this into practice that we would rejoice, that we would, uh, that we would put our trust in you, that we, would, that we would do it with gratitude, that we would do it with gentleness. And I'm asking you, Lord, to help us and change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a listen to this song. Megan does it. She does a beautiful job. It's called the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ, it holds me. The peace of Christ surrounds me. It's greater than what I can comprehend. The birth
Love you guys. We'll see you next week online.